Hi, and welcome to the Combine Art Collective Gallery and our interview with our October feature artist, Brandon Halstead, who's one of the 18 members, collective members. His show, One Nation in Division, is a very interesting and timely uh, show. But before we get started in talking about that show, I'd like to just do a brief uh, bio on you so people know who you are. He is a longtime uh, Walla Walla resident, went to school here, went to Walla Walla University, graduated with a degree in civil engineering. Took a little break from Walla Walla and uh, worked in Seattle and then came back and is now one of the owners of Connor's Flooring and Design and uh, having worked with him, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to work with you and to now be uh, one of the, the uh, fellow yes. collective <laughs> members in this gallery. So welcome to the show. We're going to learn a little bit about it. So let's walk in. Sounds good. As we walk into sort of what I would say is the main uh, alcove for this show, um, I'm really blown away by just the power of it. And there's a great statement about uh, this, which I would encourage you guys to to come in and read, but I would like to ask Brandon in a short version to talk about his inspiration for putting this show together. Basically, the themes that really pull my heartstrings tend to be things that have to do with our current political climate, the history of how America came to be, uh, the paradoxes involved in you know, manifest destiny versus taking someone else's land. Um, and now everything seems to be so heightened with social media kind of uh, fueling the fire, uh, creating this sort of like either or scenario. You're either this way or you're that way. And for some reason it feels like the middle, the majority of people that aren't quite so extreme or have views of, you know, essentially golden rule living, do it to others, um, compromise, you know, come together to find solutions. That majority of people is left to feel like they're not patriotic, they're not American enough, they're somehow trampling on the flag, they're somehow treating the nation as if it's not worth anything anymore. Um, it's as if patriotism has been stolen and we're left with this sort of, you know, you have to go extreme left or right in order to even be a part of the conversation anymore. And looking through the history of America, there's so much example, uh, you know, so many examples along the way of everything being divided intentionally. And there's the haves and the have nots, there's the landowners, there's all these different themes that are throughout the entire uh, building of what became the United States. That I feel like really this new story is the same story we've always had. It just feels like the main portion of America is now being pushed away from any part of the conversation or any part of the, the ability to get in there and make change and do something good for the, the country as a whole. So these kind of dance around those themes, different directions. So. so these two images, one of the things I saw, which I thought was interesting, was sort of the similarity of the positive and the negative, the white space here and the black space there, do they relate or are they two separate images? They are technically two separate images. Uh, I tend to, oftentimes, I think in pairs when I'm developing a theme, uh, largely because one doesn't tell the whole story sometimes, so I feel like there's a, there's a sort of another side of the coin to it or another uh, companion piece that I need, but you know, in the last few years, I've been playing with sort of the iconography of the United States, just the shape of the contiguous states. And so basically using that as sort of an icon, I've built, you know, sort of the left and right planks out of shapes of the United States, leaving a white space in the middle. This one's exactly the same. Different portions of the United States show, now more in the south and the, and the east, with the middle being the actual content, whereas the states themselves are the white space. So both of them giving off a, a different effect, um, 
which I hope people come and look at and kind of absorb and think about. And, but the general idea is nations oppose, like, you know, populations within the same country seem to be split, seem to be completely opposed to each other. And the result is kind of what is in the middle. Um, so that kind of follows that thing for those two. Great. Um, these two pieces on the end caps, which we can look at, to me represent uh, one of your strengths as an artist, which you work in every medium <laughs> possible. So I would love to have you talk about these sure. two, both in terms of the mediums that are involved in it and uh, what they mean to you. Well, the two flanking pieces here are, again, in that theme of, of sort of a paradox, uh, kind of like a duality that doesn't seem to go together. I wanted to use something very permanent, hard, um, kind of American muscle type theme. So the steel plate on the facades of both of these, um, I designed something that was cut uh, from a water jet so that it makes this kind of plate covering, and then the voids that are cut out reveal uh, kind of a piece of Americana, a print that most people know. Uh, one's a Remington, one is the Washington crossing the Delaware. The general idea being that the facade is kind of either distorting the, the content behind it, or it's blocking it, or it's changing it in some way. Um, you know, this one following the idea of kind of the border fence uh, beams that were all the rage for quite some time in the news cycle, covering a, a very famous Remington, just cowboy picture, you know, American West, this land is our land kind of thing. Um, the fence being composed of uh, elements of the Statue of Liberty, I thought was an ironic touch. Um, so that, again, but it's the, it's the heavy harshness of the steel covering a distorted version of what we used to think as Americans. So these two kind of follow those two themes in different directions. That was more like the Capitol building of Congress, you know, uh, kind of inhibiting our ability to be what we used to be, which is this romantic, uh, you know, Washington crossing the Delaware, we're claiming this nation as our own and the victory and the nation building we did after that. So it, just that paradox of how we've come to be and what we kind of do as Americans and what we value. And it's all a little skewed and a little bit uh, different now uh, in our current context. And then in the middle of this, we have this very delicate sort of uplifting image in my mind, this 3D element. So, which is really fun to see you work in 3D. Tell us a little bit about that piece. So this piece plays with a few different themes. This is basically several wood platforms that I've put together and kind of teen it in such a way. The butterfly theme on top, again with the iconography of kind of the contiguous United States um, shape as both the wings of the butterfly. It was fun to play with the theme of sort of an empire. Uh, pyramids tend to represent like a permanent empire or at least so-called permanent empire. And then a butterfly sitting on top is very fleeting. It's something that probably won't last long. It won't be there very long. Um, but it also could represent the fact that, it, you know, the United States of America is trying to be sort of the next empire, not fully understanding that it's basically a futile effort. Um, and, you know, just like these uh, pyramid-based type empires, oftentimes they disappear for no reason. And I'm certainly not instigating that or wishing for that, but just this feeling of, we think we're so permanent and so great, but who knows if we are. Could also build on the idea of chaos theory, butterfly flapping its wings in the woods, uh, creating some other issue around the world. So there's lots of different themes built into this, but I enjoy playing with different types of materials and different formats that make you walk around it, make you see it from other angles, make you kind of think about, again, sort of, a, a paradox, two different things that don't seem to go together, but putting them together makes you kind of wonder what the meaning is or what it's all about. And lastly, I want to talk about this really fun piece. Uh, uh, yes, yes. You know, <laughs> leave it to Brandon to come up with a game to play. So uh, tell us about this. Sure. 
this one here started with trying to put different words together that all kind of um, were symmetric and felt like they all kind of go together as if you're reading a sentence. In doing so, I felt like it sort of formed this grid, kind of like a game board. And the more I played with different ideas, I came up with different uh, ways to play the game, but I settled on a, a method that basically there's two outcomes to playing the game. Either you work together, you compromise, you trade places, and one of you ends up being successful, or essentially it'll end up being impossible to go anywhere. You'll have a stalemate of some sort and nobody wins. So I was feeling like it's, a, it's an interesting kind of parallel to either the congressional, um, you know, approval process, lawmaking, uh, things in the Senate, you know, kind of our, our three-party or three-branch uh, system, checks and balances, and how it's become so divisive and almost completely ineffective. So it, it's an interesting concept to see. I'd love to have people come in and just actually play the game just to see where it goes. Um, but built it off of a few different materials. Um, really, to me, the materials are not the art in the piece. It's the thought process of thinking through the actual game itself. So I'm thinking that game. this piece right here might have been a sample from Connor's flooring it, uh, and design. It, it could have started there. <laughs> it's a lovely product. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, yeah, and the, the fun thing about working with materials that are so uh, almost like commercial or built around uh, a consumer-based world. I mean, everything on here is certainly not intended for this piece, but I bought it at local stores or I sourced it from local places. And it, it kind of is a example of just putting things together that have different uh, effects on the, the viewer. You know, something as heavy as this piece of quartz, you know, and playing with these gold and silver game pieces you know, there's a certain feel to it, a certain action to it. Um, you know, putting the green felt in the back of this, you know, made it feel like a poker table. I mean, just a lot of elements I was trying to build around this idea of um, solid, unique, um, a nice, uh, classy way to display what's on top of this game board, the words and the information I'm sharing, along with the idea that when you play this, you get to feel what happens, to what the words are basically describing. So that was kind of a fun way to play with different materials and kind of pull something together that actually looked like it could be a game board, a game piece, um, and yet also keep it in the realm of what I like to do for art as well. So, yeah. Great. So last, uh, not related to this, but do oh, you want to talk about these? I do, I do. All right. Um, last yes. pieces <laughs> in the, the actual body so of the show. These two pieces. I, I really enjoy graphic designs as well. I enjoy doing things that are very simple and straightforward. Sometimes that's difficult to do because simplistic is often harder to pull off. Uh, I found this canvas at a store on clearance and it was already painted gold. And I was like, okay, I can buy that and use it for something. But the more I thought about it in our current context of our world, I enjoy the fact that gold's, gold means something completely different now than it used to. Uh, one, it's not valued as much as it used to be. In the gold standard is kind of disappearing. But also, you know, in our current political system, uh, with our current leader, there's so much emphasis on gold everything. You know, gold is kind of his trademark. And I thought it'd be interesting to try to boil down the most simple possible statement with just two elements, just the red and the gold. And so, uh, <laughs> It, it comes off pretty direct when you really read it right. Um, the one above it here was again dealing with border issues. And so I, again, it's a graphic effect that I enjoy to create. This is the border with Mexico, basically, where the border wall would or could go at some point. And so I was playing with the idea of a graph where this kind of looks like a declining something. I didn't put anything on the left or right or you know left or the bottom to tell you what's going up or down or what meters there are. But it was fun to play with that idea of just a simple, this is the border, this is what it looks like, and then you put it on a graph and it changes the whole effect. So again, sort of that graphic effect, trying to be as direct and straightforward as possible, uh, which is something I have to challenge myself with, because 
I'm usually a little bit more elaborate and over the top. So, so that was kind of part of the, the theme of these here. So yeah, that's the last one. <laughs> well, um, and the last thing uh, that I want to say is that I'm very jealous oh. of your signature chop. Oh. Because <laughs> it is so, it's just, it's so you and it's just so <laughs> simple and direct and it's beautiful and it doesn't matter where you place it on your uh, your yeah. your piece of work, it just it adds to it for us. Oftentimes artist signatures I think take away oh. from it. So well, it's it's all part of your attention to detail. Very and kind of you. I I was hoping people would notice where I signed those two because I sang right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of re reinforcing the idea of there's a middle ground. There's the middle majority is somewhere out there and what is being divided kind of causes the middle to have trouble. So I placed myself in the middle uh, just as a way to kind of symbolize that, that sort of dichotomy of left and right split, you know, different opinions in each stream. And I'm like, no, I'm right. Right here. <laughs> so that was kind of fun to play with too. So, right. Well, I hope uh, that you will all come in and just spend some time. We actually, for the first time, have a bench yes. in our gallery, and it's here specifically because we feel like this show is powerful and you really need a place to sit and, and think about it. Um, so thank you for bringing that to our gallery. And he also has some other really great pieces in here uh, that show his depth of working with different mediums. So please come to the gallery, enjoy his show and all the other beautiful work that's done by the uh, 18 collective artist members. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you.